graduates and guests, can I, all, can I ask you all please to stand for Professor Peter Clegg, Executive Dean of the Institute of Life Course and Medical Sciences, and Professor Susan Dawson, Dean of the School of Veterinary Science. Please be seated. I declare this congregation for the celebration of our graduates open. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to your belated graduation ceremony. I know it's 16 months late, but it's really wonderful to welcome you all here in person at long last. I'm Professor Peter Clegg, Executive Dean of the Institute of Life Course and Medical Sciences. I want to say firstly what a tremendous privilege and a pleasure it is to be here with you today as we celebrate this important milestone in your lives, together with your families and fellow students, your lecturers, and all those who supported you on your journey to graduating from the University of Liverpool. I have been in exactly the same position as you are in today, not as a student at this university, but as a student graduating in veterinary medicine, in my case from the University of Cambridge over 30 years ago. Your graduation ceremony is a day to celebrate and to reflect. And I recall that it is also a day of very mixed emotions. I remember both feeling both relieved and proud to have completed my studies, sad that this chapter of my life at the university was, had come to an end, and both excited and nervous about the future and what it had in store for me. But that was a long time ago, and to today is all about you, your achievements and your personal successes here at the University of Liverpool. It is a day to look forward to the future and to feel excited about your aspirations and, and career or future study plans. Most of all, it's a day to celebrate everything you've achieved and to enjoy the moment with your loved ones, with those who you've studied alongside and those, those who you've learned so much from. It is also a day to enjoy a return to this great city and to receive a warm welcome from your university. We hope you and your guests will join us after the ceremony for a drop-in reception in the Mountford Hall in the Guild. We hope that the city of Liverpool will always feel like home whenever you return. You may have chosen to stay here and make the city your home, or you may have already called it home when you joined us in your first year of university. Whatever, we hope your relationship with the city, that is the place where you have made friends and memories, will last a lifetime. You are the very first students to graduate here in this building, the Yoko Ono Lennon Center, the newest addition to our Liverpool campus. Music is a point of pride for everyone originally from the city and from everyone choosing to make Liverpool their home. It may be one of the reasons you wanted to come and study and live in this city. Dare I say it, music is almost as important to this city as football. One way or another, music is a reason why so many people want to visit Liverpool and why so many people love it. And music is something that anyone from any academic discipline or background can enjoy and participate in. And so, it feels particularly appropriate to hold our great university's graduation ceremonies here on campus in this new state-of-the-art performance space dedicated to the teaching, performance, and enjoyment of music for all. But as well as being iconic and memorable city for music, you will know that University of Liverpool, Liverpool's School of Veterinary Science was the first veterinary school in the UK to be part of a university and has always been a leading educational provider for the vets of the future. As you know, we are unique among British veterinary schools in having two on-site working farms as well as two referral hospitals and three op first opinion practices with full hospitalisation and surgical facilities. These facilities have allowed your lecturers to train you to become practical, compassionate and resilient in your chosen career, with the skills and qualities required to practice in the 21st century. 
The veterinary profession has moved on enormously over the last 30 years, and the profession now is unrecognizable from the profession I joined over 30 years ago with the advancement of technology and the advancement of the business corporate model of veterinary practice. So who knows what another 30 years will look like in, in veterinary practice, but hopefully you have been provided with the tools for lifelong learning to allow you to embrace the change and development which is going to go on in your working lifetime. You have been stretched to think about beyond the textbook, lecture theatre, laboratory and operating theatre, and you have been encouraged to apply that knowledge to the world around you. By being places of debate, universities are one of the most important pillars of our civil society. Your University of Liverpool education has enabled you to realise just how far you can go and provided you with the skills you need to get there. Higher education is built on the skills of collaboration, on the spirit of collaboration. The free flow of idea and knowledge depends on it. Our university makes a huge difference to people's lives, locally, nationally and globally. And I am enormously proud to represent a faculty full of students whose skills, energy and insight will solve the problems we face in the world tomorrow and the challenges of the future. You need only to look at the buildings that make up the university campus which stand as a testament to the importance of the place on our history as pioneers in science. At the turn of the 20th century, not long after the university was founded, the world's first public radio transmission crackled into life thanks to research carried out by the University of Liverpool, by University of Liverpool professor Oliver Lodge. He would let, later first demonstrate the first use of surgical x-ray and play an instrumental role in establishing the first x-ray department in a, in a UK university. The Oliver Lodge building on North Campus is a beacon to his work and an inspiration for a new generation of physicists. Five minutes away from the Oliver Lodge building is our Chadwick building, named after Sir James Chadwick, who established the university as a hub of research into nuclear physics. Our state is one of the world's leading institutions in nuclear particle and accelerator physics draws directly from his work. Uh, Chadwick is best known for his discovery of the neutron in 1932, which led to him being awarded the Nobel Prize. And the university has played a pivotal role in propelling scientific re revolution through our nine Nobel laureates who have led the way in fields as diverse as understanding the life cycle of the malarial parasite to nuclear disarmament. These and our many other notable alumni, discoveries and research profile might be just be some of the very reasons you chose to study this, at this university. We are so grateful that you did and we are enormously proud of each and every one of you, not least because you've experienced a university journey unlike anyone else before. As you experienced, the past few years has been unlike any other period in history. This is true for all of us sat here today and for people around the world who continue to experience the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on our personal lives, on our health systems, on our economies, on our shared environment, and on our plans for the future. So many lives have been lost and so many families have been separated. If you have not been personally affected, then you'll almost certainly know someone who has been. Students in the universities up and down the country and all around the world have been hit hard by the disruption to their education and their social lives than, and that, that this pandemic has caused. Your university experience has been different to what you imagined and expected and at times it will have felt, felt difficult. And I'm sure you as veterinary graduates would have found the uh, transition to practice extremely unusual in the times of COVID and a pandemic. Your own experience of well-being is always at the forefront of our decision-making, but over the past 18 months, we've had to carefully consider and balance so many decisions around your teaching arrangements and your safety on campus. I know it has not been easy for you. I know you've had, probably had long days, sleepless nights, and difficult times, exac exacerbated by these unique global circumstances. COVID-19 has devastated and divided people and continues to do so but it has been shown there's best of human spirit too. The university is a community just like any other, and I'm extremely proud of the many ways in which our students and staff at this university, and particularly those in our faculty, 
have been and continue to be part of the pandemic response. From healthcare students and clinical researchers volunteering to help to help treat patients and as part of the vaccination efforts, to work, researchers working tirelessly to find drugs, sequence genomes, analyze data, and much more in order to help control the virus inform public policy. Our faculty prides itself on facing the problems of society and putting our hands up to say we can solve them. This university has a community and civic mission, mission running through its civic history, through its rich, rich history. To this day, we remain committed to this important civic mission in the city of Liverpool and to our role as an anchor institution here. We continue to make real economic, social, health, employment, and cultural and other contributions to this great and unique city. We, take, we are a university that takes real pride and equality of opportunity in delivering projects and activities which widen access for students who are traditionally underrepresented in higher education. Learners from low particip participation neighborhoods, care leavers, disabled students, estranged students, adult learners, asylum seekers and refugee students, and students from minority ethnic backgrounds. Knowledge should be celebrated, discussed and debated, and it should be accessible to all. It is through the discussion and dissemination of ideas and knowledge that society is shaped. Our aim is to inspire, engage and enable every single student to fulfill their potential by raising their awareness, challenging barriers and providing opportunities. As a student here, you'll have walked past a plaque, perhaps daily, fixed, on our, fixed to our Victoria building, which reads, for the advancement of learning and ennoblement of life. This is the foundation on which our university was built and is a motto that continues to guide us to this day in all that we do. I will make a guess, based on attending many graduation ceremonies over the years, that you are planning to already have, already have pose for a graduation photograph in front of our Victoria building. This beautiful and iconic red brick gallery and museum towers over the campus and serves as our most recognizable backdrop in many, many social media posts. This building was designed by Alfred Waterhouse and that it has been a central part of university life for over a century. It houses an incredible collection of weird and wonderful curiosities for example, the world's most important display of false teeth, which I haven't been to see. And under the, the same roof are many other ex, uh, examples of fine art. This extraordinary brick and terracotta dressing selected for the Gothic exterior of the Victoria Building led to the terming of the phrase Red Brick University. This was first termed by Bruce Truscott, which, who was a, which was a pseudonym for Edgar Allison Pierce, a professor of Spanish at the Liverpool from 1922 to 1952, who wrote an influential book of the same title about universities originating in the 19th century. Indeed, we are and always will be the original Red Brick University, and in turn, you will always be Liverpool Originals. Our university has a long, successful history of graduating, inspiring alumni who go on to achieve great things. You have now joined our talented international alumni community, uh, a fundamentally important part of the University of Liverpool family. Our alumni community supports our students in many ways. Some of you may have, may have experienced this while you were studying here, from delivering lectures and workshops to, to running alumni networks, offering work placements and mentoring. We hope that like so many of our alumni, you will stay in touch with us and help guide and support our future students and broaden their horizons through your own experience. It is through that we, that we are known, you are our, it is through you that we are known. You are our greatest ambassadors and through your achievements and the careers you will go on to have, you will also become role models and an important source of inspiration for the next generation of graduates. Since those early months of 2020 that made an indelible mark on our lives, the, the entire world has changed in a way that was inconceivable to all of us back then. 
The pandemic has had a profound effect on everyone's lives and it made us to truly appreciate our loved ones and the experience and the memories we make together. I want to take a moment to celebrate the role that your loved ones, perhaps family, perhaps friends, perhaps both, have played in your success. I hope today you will find a moment to thank them for their support and personal sacrifice. For families and friends, lecturers and placement leads, and all those who have supported you on your journey, today is a day of celebration for them too. Whatever challenges you have experienced during your time with us, remember that through hard work, determination and a strong support network, you overcame them all. Your capacity to think critically and challenge honestly, forged by the teaching staff, your classmates and our community will help you to prepare for whatever comes next. This is your well-earned opportunity to take a moment and consider just how far you have come. Despite these challenges, I hope you will also remember many happy and joyful moments during your time at the university. And not only from an academic perspective, of course, I know that through your time here, you will have forged connections and made friends who will stay with you for the rest of your lives. Today is not the end, but rather the beginning of a new chapter in your lives. Graduation is about looking forward as well as back, and each of you has a promising future ahead. Whatever path you choose to take and whatever opportunities you seize, you seize you now have a much sought after quali qualification from a world renowned university. You have a range of experiences and de developed a successfully honed set of skills which will serve you well and you have our ongoing support as you start your career. I know most of you have been working in veterinary practice so starting your careers, this is sort of a few months out of date so I apologise for that. A veterinary degree is an immensely valuable passport for your future career. I'm sure most of you undertook this degree, very much as I did, to become a veterinary practitioner. However, it is important to remember that it does open doors for numerous diverse careers, which you probably haven't even thought about yet. In my current role at the university, it gives me great pleasure that as Dean of the Institute of Medical Science, that I am directly in charge and line manage there's both the School of Medicine and the School of Dentistry, which as a veterinary surgeon gives me a great deal of pleasure, which is the superior profession. <laughs> but I, I saw set off on my career aspirations when I was sat where you were. My career aspiration was to be a mixed practitioner in the north of England. So I think, you know, your career can take you in all sorts of unexpected directions. And I'd say the career path I've taken is not something I would have considered when I was sat where you are. A University of Liverpool veterinary degree is the best preparation you could hope for to make the most of the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. And we look forward to hearing about all that you go on to achieve. Students, you have demonstrated such resilience and motivation during your time with us. Never forget how important you are to the university. You are the beating heart of our institution. Without you, the university would be but classrooms and lecture halls. When we work together, university is the place where discoveries are made, ideas are formed, friendships are forged, career paths are decided on, and lives are changed. It is when we work together as staff and students that education is truly transformational. Thank you. I now invite Professor Susan Dawson, Dean of the School of Veterinary Sciences, to present graduates from our class of 2020. Thank you. If you want to take masks off, if people are taking photographs, you're welcome to do so. <laughs> Professor Clegg. It gives me tremendous pleasure to present to you the following graduates from the class of 2020. Joseph Winrow. <laughs> Scott Watson.
Bedwar Roberts. <laughs> Olivia Frances Massey. <laughs> Honor Rowley. <laughs> Natasha Anita Kirby. Alicia Ratatha. <laughs> Emma Mary Booth. <laughs> Hannah Kate Lynch. Nicola Francis Rose Seachern. Charlotte Morton. Johanna Maxwell. Emily Prince. Tom Henry Lister. <laughs> Charlotte Elizabeth Rutter. <laughs> Imogen Louise Payne. <laughs> Hannah Eve Sharkey. Annabelle Joyce Yates. <laughs> Freya Isabella Wood. <laughs> Jessica Rowe. <laughs> Harriet Maria Lucas. Amelia Hanna Sima Rashid. Josh Ryan Weber. Abigail Elizabeth Sanders. Robert Noble. Anna Mary Williams. Charlotte Phillips. Emily Harriet Taylor. Jasmine Joyce Curlew. Jessica Lewin. <laughs> Phoebe Oyung Lung. <laughs> Hannah Pocock. <laughs> Imogen Francis Allen. Joshua Alexander George Speak Parker. <laughs> Georgia Lotte Misselbrook. <laughs> Ra 
Rebecca Elizabeth Littlehales. <laughs> Laura Ann Prattley. <laughs> Kate Irving. <laughs> Emmet Ismail. Beth Watson. <laughs> Tierney O'Connor. <laughs> Bronya Perks. <laughs> Sophie McCulloch. Richard Owen Jones. <laughs> Elise Rodden. <laughs> Georgina Mayan Hardy Lloyd. <laughs> Natasha Newman. Bethany Richmal Sugden. <laughs> Chelsea Naomi Sher Thorne. <laughs> Francesca Henrietta Genevieve Simone King. <laughs> Charlotte Lloyd. <laughs> Harriet Tollerfield. <laughs> Rowan James Harris Wright. <laughs> Beth Hunt. Ji Sun Lee. <laughs> Catherine Faye Reynolds. <laughs> Tear Max. <laughs> Oscar Phillips. and Helen Ruth Braid. Thank you, Professor Dawson. I would like now to invite Harriet Lucas, uh, one of the recent graduands, to come and join us on the stage to reflect on their student experience. So thank you, Harriet. Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, family, friends and fellow graduates, I am honoured to have the opportunity to speak to you all today. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Harriet Lucas and I graduated with a degree in veterinary science and qualified as a veterinary surgeon. Secondly, I'd like to say we did it. Not only did we graduate in a pandemic, but we have made it through our first year of our careers with COVID-19 very much at the forefront. After all those years spent working hard to get our degrees, we can finally celebrate and congratulate ourselves on this great achievement. I remember when I came to the university for my vet school interview, those many moons ago, filled with nerves, and even then, Liverpool just seemed like the right fit. Fast forward to now, and I can't believe I'm standing here speaking at our graduation ceremony, having already completed my first year of being a vet. Time flies when you're having fun. 
I will always look back on my time at the University of Liverpool with a great amount of fondness. I already miss it so much. From nights out in Concert Square, going for a coffee on Bold Street, to many hours spent in the Harold Cohen or Sydney Jones, the overall experience was everything you could want from going to the university and more. Of course, there were some lows, and I have to thank my family and friends for their support throughout my degree. My first three years were spent in Liverpool, being a normal student. During this time, I made and cemented friendships that I'd have for life. And for that, I am incredibly grateful to the University of Liverpool. I was also part of the vet netball team, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Three years flew by with lots of fun, possibly too much, laughs and hard work. The next stage of my university career was spent on the Wirral at the University of Liverpool's Leehurst campus. The campus is a wonderful place to spend two years with top facilities and leading academics in their field. My final two years involved putting the theory learned over the previous three years into practice, whilst also being surrounded by all my best friends. During my fourth year, I was vice president of the Liverpool University Veterinary Society. This was a hugely rewarding role. I pioneered Wellbeing Wednesday, an initiative to encourage well-being in veterinary students. I also helped run Tag Rugby, Clinical Club and Vet Netball. Having this responsibility alongside studying and having a social life meant my fourth year was a very busy one. This leads me on to my final year, which was spent on rotations at the Small Animal Teaching Hospital, Philip, Philip Louverhume Equine Hospital and the Farm Practice. This was one of my favourite years, finally feeling like a veterinary surgeon whilst learning from world-renowned experts. One of my favourite parts was getting to know more people in our year due to our rotation groups. I also have to give a special mention to Wine Wednesdays and, of course, Brewers. <laughs> Finally, on to my first year in practice. Although there have been real highs in the past year, it has also proven that life can be really tough, especially with the current state of the veterinary prof profession. The combination of the high demand for the services of veterinary surgeons, the high expectations of clients, and the recruitment crisis means it can be tough at times to be a vet. Although I do feel the teaching at the University of Liverpool has meant that we are well equipped clinically to deal with our new career, we need to make sure we are checking in on our friends and being there for them when they need us. This can be related to all walks of life, veterinary or not. So, I'd like to leave everyone with a quote from Charlie McKeezy's book, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse. Nothing beats kindness, said the horse. It sits quietly beyond all things. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your celebrations. We all deserve it. Okay, I'd like to thank Harriet for her excellent words there. And I think it's very true you know, that the veterinary profession is not an easy place at times to be in at the moment. And uh, you know, the, the demands of the job, the lack of vets, the, the demands of clients, the difficulty of working COVID makes it an extremely challenging environment. And I think it's really important we all look out for each other and uh, be there for each other because it isn't always easy. There are a lot of good things about the jobs, but there's, there's a lot of challenges at the moment. So, so thank you for those very wise words. So drawing the ceremony to end, congratulations to everybody. Thanks to the staff for all their efforts over the years. Thanks for the parents and families for being there for the graduates and especially to the graduates. I'm delighted that you've made it. I'm delighted you're here, albeit late and well done to everybody. I declare this congregation for the celebration of our graduates closed. Salva sit universitas nostra, quod precantes consigamus. Graduates and guests. Please stand.
Congratulations.